Sorry. Hello, everyone. You all right, Sandra? Yeah, sorry. This is Sandra, my caretaker, and this is Myrtle. We have to refer to Myrtle because there's heavy breathing, and as I said, there's not been heavy breathing in this flat for many years. This is Myrtle, the bulldog who loves Sandra. I promised you we would do this. Middle-aged minx meets, and this is the very first one. And I said, who would you like me to meet? And all of you said, Sandra, the caretaker. Hello, everyone. Are you looking down there? Because that's where they told I, you to I look. I think so. I've just... Just keep... There's Hi another everyone. one that just keep waving and we'll pick up. They'll pick it up somewhere. Okay. Um, and you also wanted to meet Dave the cabbie. And Dave the cabbie is going to make an appearance because he's actually bringing our very first contributor to my flat in his black cab. But Sandra, none of this would be possible if it wasn't for our sponsor. And our sponsor is... MTHK. It's an eye care brand that has been formulated by three professionals, three specialists from Moorfields Eye Hospital. And they have brought out three products. I used MTHK long before they approached me. You've never used these, no, have you? No, I'm never. going to show you in a moment. So I bought these for myself and then they reached forward and said, would you like to work with us? So the reason I love them is I'm postmenopausal. I sit in front of screens all the day and I get dry eye and uh, my eyes feel quite sore and raw by the end of the day. So these are the drops. Okay. I'm going to give you these, Sandra. You've got your own little Thank bag, you. actually, to take them home in. Thank do you, you have trouble with your eyes? I do, actually, because obviously I use a lot of cleaning products. She does. And we smell as fresh as a daisy here, don't we? <laughs> and I tend to get dry eyes towards the end of the day. Well, and this is going like to be perfect. As you say, like gritty. Yeah. Very gritty. So you have the drops, but what I also love, and I use these at work in the middle of a show when I'm looking, I look at nine screens, would you believe, when I do my radio show. And what I love about this, this is a spray that you spray on closed eyes. Okay. So it goes on to closed eyes and then it just sinks in beautifully. So it is MTHK, three products, in the middle of this chat with my first contributor. You don't even know who she is yet, do you? No. I haven't told anyone. We're going to have an intermission, a thank you to the sponsor, where we're going to do a 15 second blink test. And if you blink within those 15 seconds, it means you may be suffering from dry eye. Oh, okay. So would you like these? There's vitamins as well, eye vitamins as well. Three products plus the eye vitamins in a special bag. Aww. And this is all thanks to our sponsor. So thank you, MTHK. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be able to feed Matilda or even live in the same block Aww. as you, Sandra. Thank you so much. That's really kind. Myrtle is only here because she loves, she loves Sandra. Shall we crack on? Yes? Yes, yes. Sorry, I thought you were talking to me. No, I'm not talking Yes, yes. Again. We'll crack on and bring okay. in our very special guest. Okay. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Back in the noughties, these young people were what some called messing about in their bedrooms. Zoella, as a young schoolgirl, filmed herself putting on makeup, trying on clothes, and her younger brother Joe filmed himself playing tricks and all kinds of antics. And they grew a very successful fan base. Between the two of them, they have over 15 million followers on YouTube and over 20 million on Instagram. And they are still as much of a success now as when they first started. So, what is it like being the mother of these two global sensations? So I am so excited to say that on my very first Middle Age Minx Meets, I am joined by the often spoken about, seldom heard, seldom seen, mother, and that is Tracy Sugg. First of all, thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure, Jo. I'm more excited than you. Well, I, see, <laughs> I'm really chuffed because you do, oh, it's all about me again, I start off with my, but you do follow me, don't yes. you? Yes, oh yes. Yes, I do. Which I take yeah. as an enormous compliment. But you've also come up to London bearing gifts. Look at this, <laughs> everybody. And, 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 and. What's in here? Well, the top one's for Myrtle. Oh, the top one's for Myrtle. We yes. stuck Myrtle, by the way, <laughs> under the bed because her breathing is just so distracted. So this is for her. I'll bring her in at the end. It's from Hector, really. It's from but Hector. I'm not, not sure if it's... And Hector <laughs> is Tracy's dog and Kong. I know that we mustn't product place, but these are indestructible. Yes. Did you? Yep, yeah, that's you know why that. I got it. Because a bulldog yes. will literally rip something apart. Oh, my gosh. You never believe it. Hector found it and 
sort of took it off, so he really? thought he was going to play with it. Oh, he no. thought it was for him. I wonder <laughs> if you should be able to smell Hector on that. So she thank might. you, Hector, if you ever watch this. Thank you. Kong toys are fantastic. Yeah. And something else in here, <laughs> which I know, oh. I can't believe you did this. I just can't believe you did this. This is homemade marmalade. <laughs> is this from Oranges in Your Own Garden? No, no. they came from Seville. So, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I know where you live, and I didn't think it was that tropical. But no, do you? No. Are you a good cook then? Do you cook? I quite like. A lot? Um, I love cooking. I wouldn't say I was good, um, but I do enjoy cooking. I'm yeah. So and marmalade's is, about the only preserve I can make. I is, it? Yes. is it? And like, can I just open the lid yeah, because I tried can. to make marmalade at school and it never set. This is the taste. You see, oh. it doesn't look. <laughs> see, it just remains there. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Sug marmalade, everybody. <laughs> there are so many things I want to ask you, and I want to ask about yourself, but also about your children, because I'll, I'll, I'll be absolutely honest with you, and this is on my very first vlog. My agent, who you met briefly, I met him once for dinner in Covent Garden, and he said, Joe, have you ever watched Zoella? And I went, no, and we chatted, and then I went home and watched Zoella, who could literally be my granddaughter. She could be my, you could be my daughter, she could be my granddaughter. <laughs> but I was drawn in to watching her do very little but talk to a camera yeah. and putting on makeup, and I was sold. And then I don't in any way try to emulate her, but I just thought I love this medium of just putting yourself online. And as I said in my introduction, both she and Joe are the originals, they are the trailblazers. But I guess when they started, they had no idea what they were doing, did a they? Absolutely none. They had no idea. I don't think any of them really knew what was what was going to, to develop from it. And um, we certainly didn't. didn't and you were living in a tiny little village yes, in Wiltshire. Yes. So there weren't that many distractions for young people. No. So they probably had to make their own entertainment. Yeah, they did. They did. Yes, and we, we didn't actually live in the village. We were just slightly out, um, which Zoe, both of them, remind me constantly that it was like a mile to the school. So um, they used to come out of school and go, you haven't got the car, we've got to walk home. Ugh. There was very little to do. They used to play in the woods and play in the garden and go down to the, the recreation ground and, and everything. So, yeah, they just used to make their own entertainment. They made they? their own entertainment. Yes. And... Were they filming on phones or on cameras? Oh, we didn't know. No, they didn't have cam um, phones. Um, we had an old camcorder, and um, this is where my my dad started off, and we used to borrow it, and he used to sort of video holidays and things like that. Um, and actually, Zoe, unbeknown to, to us at the time, videoed, when we went to Portugal once, what she'd put in her suitcase, would you believe? I think she was about 11. I'm about to pack for my holidays. You can have a look at my bag and watch it overload if you want. OK, so here's my bag. And that was way before YouTube, way before. And that then became a thing, you know, what I packed for my holiday became a thing. So, you know, she was, as I said, a trailblazer. She launched all of this sim very simple voyeuristic yes. way of, of um, revealing bits of your life. Yes. And when did you know what they were getting up to? With Zoe, um, when packages started arriving from Body Shop and things like that, and I'm like, well, what's this? Well, you know, what? And I knew she was sort of like, she started off blogging, obviously, mm. and then went to the, the vlogging. Um, but yes, and then they used to have meetups and, and all this sort of thing in London. Oh my God! <laughs> Okay, now the anxiety is coming through about what just happened. <laughs> um, uh, there's a little insight into uh, mine and Alfie's life. And then, of course, Joe um, saw his sister doing this, um, and he was working as a, a Thatcher. He was a Thatcher, yeah. Um, and thought, you know, and so I think Zoe and Alfie at the time suggested that he should do some vlogging too. It's recorded. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> My name's Joe. I'm 20 years old. I am the brother of Zoe. When Zoe and Joe were vlogging and filming in their bedroom, there were there was no comparison. There were no other influencers around. How did you feel? Did you think, oh, they'll grow out of this? Did you were you suspicious? Were, what did you think at the time? Because they were having fun and enjoying themselves. To me, it was just 
yeah, just a natural thing to do. Um, and I, but I never assumed it would be a career. I never really? dreamt that it would take it, take take off the way it did, and that they would end up doing all the things that they did. It's interesting because you can see that Joe loved thatching. He returns to mm. it every. I think he's with Prince Charles actually. Yes, he's thatching, and. He, when he goes back to his home, I love those vlogs. They have real affection for their childhoods, don't they? Oh, yes, and their friends. They're still in touch with all their friends, and, and I think that's kept them grounded as well. Joe's always said um, that if YouTube doesn't work out, as long as I can afford a van and a ladder, I'll go back to thatching, which I believe he really he would. would. He'd he probably really enjoy it. Yes, yeah. he's such an outdoor boy. Yeah. He really is. He's, yeah. he's very like me in that if the sun's shining, I want to be out. Zoe, Zoe's much more of a home, home bird, and so um, they're quite different in that respect. What did the village make of it? And when did you start to see the village realising who was living in your house? I don't think they... Re I don't want to sound patronising, but I really don't think they understood. And even at the time um, when Joe, for instance, went to meet Simon Cowell and things like that were happening in the early days, I, I, I don't think people really understood what YouTubers were. Uh, I used to eat mud in the garden when I was little. I like worms and rabbit poo. Okay, so that's more than a habit. That is. I mean, that's like a psychiatric, yeah. that's that's like psychiatric problem. <laughs> but, but the children grew up knowing nearly everybody in the village. It's that kind of village, and everybody kind of looked out for everybody. And, um, you know, the dinner ladies live next door to the school, so that, you know, it was really sweet. But, of course, they became YouTubers after secondary school, so yes. they moved away yes. from, from the small village school. Time now for a word from our sponsors, and it is, of course, MTHK, and it's a perfect time to just spray my eyes because this is how refreshing it is. MTHK are our sponsors, and I thank you very much. And just for you, we have a 15-second blink test. So if you have a look at what we're going to show you, blink a couple of times, then look at it, and if you blink within those 15 seconds, you could possibly be suffering from dry eye. Did you secretly think I'd like them to become doctors and vets and I mean I've only just met you but I don't think you're that sort of mother. What I mean but did you? Did you did you think yeah. they'd ever go off on a different path? I always said to them, I really don't care what you do as long as you enjoy doing it. You know, you spend most of your life working. I don't want you I, I neither of them wanted to go off to university. They both were quite home birds as well, so Zoe definitely didn't want... She loved fashion and she loved design, um, but she didn't want to go to university to study. Jo just wanted to be creative and and sort of take over his, his uncle's Thatching. trade, so... But yeah. you're creative, you have your own jewellery line. Is it right, am I right in thinking the National Trust stocks yes. some of your jewellery? Yes, they That do. is amazing. Yes, I was very lucky. So, yeah. so for anyone that has a National Trust membership card, and I hope everybody does, um, where can they find it and what are the designs? Well, it, it's changed slightly because um, when you um, create um, items for the National Trust, you have to be within 30 miles. Now I'm not within, because it used to be Avebury, Laycock and uh, Sowerhead. But obviously I've moved away, so I have to find... Somewhere so, local. Yes. So, um, so I've got to yet. Well, to anyone watching this around <laughs> Sussex area can put in bids. But there was creativity in their home anyway, so it was inevitable yes, that they were going yes. to both come out with creative brains. Yes. yes, I mean, I even, when they were growing up, I, I decided I was going to make wedding dresses for people. I didn't, honestly, I did um, needlework at school, but nothing, nothing beyond that. Think big. So I thought, right, OK, so I made a dress for somebody and then somebody else asked me. And I mean, honestly, I'm the least Virgo person you can possibly imagine. And to, to actually say, oh, well, yes, I'll make your wedding dress. <laughs> but I got away with it. You so. got away with it? And they're probably still <laughs> hanging in a wardrobe, well, no, you know, know. With that special day. Um, do you think they would have become as successful if they'd grown up in a city? 
yes, I think it's, it really suited them, um, if that's the right thing to say. They, they, yes, they enjoyed where they lived. Um, and the schools they went to, we were lucky. They did well at school. Um, they had a really good peer group, um, people that they mixed with. Let's talk about Joe, because that's when you first contacted me. Um, I interviewed him on stage um, for Waitress, for the BBC, actually. He's such a polite, well-brought-up boy. They've both been well-brought-up. Does that make you feel... I mean, does, do you laugh when you hear me say something like that? Or... Yes, because I didn't... I don't think I tried really hard. <laughs> it just... It's just the way that... They turns out. Because, they Tracy, they could have gone right off the graph. Do you oh, know what yes. I mean? I've interviewed people whose egos can't even fit in the studio door. Do you know what I mean? Their yes. ego comes in before them. And I haven't met Zoe, but Joe is like, he is so humble. And I, and I just think there's no ego, but it could have gone completely the other way, couldn't it? I try to teach them to be polite and considerate. And, and he's the same, actually, with my mum my, my and nans and looking after older people. Yeah. He's very... Um... He does look after older people. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I, um, yeah, he's, he's very kind and caring. Yeah. And, he, yeah, that's his, that's his nature. When he was little, he was a shy boy. He used to hang on to my arm. Um, I, th I think, actually, thinking about it now, the school was so tiny, Laycock School. Um, there, I think it was 43 children there at the time. So it was a really family... There were three classrooms. And when they put on plays at Christmas and Easter and whatever, um, they had... Each child had to take a part. They had to do something. They were pushed forward. They were always... Whereas when I was at school, um, I used to hide at the back. Really? You know, I didn't want to be in anything. I didn't want to read out loud in class. I didn't... Oh, no, I can think of nothing worse. But yet they, they were pushed to do things. So and it I, gave them I some think confidence. It, yes, definitely. But that's... I said in my introduction, you're often spoken about. You're never seen. There's one... Joe goes back home and you collect him in your mini. Were you in a mini? Yes, I think. yes. And, I um, mini. <laughs> and, and I thought, oh, there she is, because you never, you're never seen. And now I've met you, I realise that's choice. You don't want to be in, you don't want mm, to be in these yeah, blocks. It's not my, not my thing at all. Children can do it, I'll let them do it, but it's not my, my thing. When you're out with your kids... You is it? Do you find it quite alarming? I, I I know that they don't like it a great. They don't. They love their fans, but they're not natural extroverts either of them. Do you find it a bit overwhelming when people it, recognise? Yeah. Them? Um. I I'm still stunned by the fact that people do recognise them. You know. I mean, to me, they're Zoe and Joe, my children. Um. And I'm useless at spotting people, absolutely useless. But Zoe, especially, she can spot somebody famous from miles away. She's got such good recognition. It's really odd when people come up and want photographs and I end up with all the shopping bags, you know. They don't want me in the picture. You're holding I'll, or, or I'll take the photograph for them. Um, I shouldn't do that now because it's not that, is it? It's plain. It does amaze me that so many people know them. And when you get... Alfie, Zoe, Diane and Joe walking around. It's like, yeah. you know, you can see people in cafes. Yeah. You're now a grandmother. Mm -hmm. And do you see history repeating itself? Because your kids brought something out of the bag. Even as much as you love photographing and filming and everything, they, they embraced the new technology like that. Yeah. Do you see this happening with your granddaughter? Yes, do you? 100%. She is... Um, I mean, obviously I've only got Zoe and Joe to compare with. I don't know what Alfie was like as a little one growing up. But she is so like... I mean, to me, she looks a bit like Zoe because she has the blue eyes and the blonde hair. Um, but she is so cheeky like Joe. Joe was the cheekiest little... He would pull funny faces and he knew he was entertaining um, as, a, as a tiny tot. And Otty is just the same. She loves... Um, being, I wouldn't say the centre of attention, but she loves it when people are looking at her. She's such a confident little girl. Um, and she's just a delight, an absolute delight. Can I just thank you? Because I never thought you'd say yes. I never oh, thought I you'd so say yes. I so that you asked me. And I... And am I the first? You're the first. Oh, my God. This is the first, <laughs> yes. 
because I knew you'd ask Zoe. I thought you should say, Zoe, this bizarre woman has now asked me to come. And, no, but she, no, she watches you. I know she does. She does. I am really chuffed. Yeah. But also, and I, and, and I really want to mention Louise Renison because Louise Renison wrote Angus Thongs and what was called Full Frontal Snogging. That's what the books were, the Angus books. And Zoe, whenever I watched her, would have them on the bookcase. Mm -hmm. And she would then say, this is an Angus moment. And so I said to Tracy, can you tell Zoe that... Louise Renison was like my best mate. She, God rest her soul, is no longer with us. She lived in the flat downstairs. She would have been so chuffed, seriously, to know. Yeah. Um, and Zoe was a huge fan. It is still a huge fan. Yes, and maybe yes. Ossie will read her books as well. Oh, I, I'm sure. I'm sure Zoe's still got them all. She yeah, no, have, I bet. Absolutely will I have. bet she yeah. has. Yes. So we'll pay tribute to Louise Renison on this as well. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thank you. You're very welcome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for asking me. Oh, my God. <laughs> It's been, Absolutely. it's been a lovely day. No, oh, no. This is from Hector. It's it a cold. From Hector. It's a spaghetti. actually even sniffed this. Yes. Gosh. You love a cold toy, don't you? There. There. I thought this can't be the mother, no. This yes, this is the mother. <laughs> like, yeah, like, so wow. beautiful. Yeah, oh, she really that, is. It's a lovely outfit. I know. I, look, yeah. This belt, which I thought was original Gucci, oh, yeah, is Marks and Spencer's. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Marks yeah. and Spencer's vintage. Okay. It's amazing, <laughs> isn't it? And this is the first time we, and Joe and I have been together in the, day, in the daylight. Do you know, we ever. never, ever, ever see, see each other in daylight. Yeah. He brings me home from work. At two in the morning. At one in the morning. So he's see all my wrinkles. This is my, and I've got this awful, this is from my cold day, I've got uh, this dry nose, oh, well. <laughs> which my agent you met. Yeah, I did, Nigel, yeah. I said, Nigel, does this show? And he went, yes. Yeah. And I thought, what can I do? There's nothing I can do. It's like... My nose hair showing. <laughs> staying, staying with the theme. <laughs> so, I was saying, you've got the Golden Girls on tattoos, haven't you? Uh, well, i got one of them, Betty White. Betty White oh, on there. Oh, she, is she the one that sadly passed away? Yeah, I think yeah. they all have now. She's they all have. She was the last one standing, oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Two days for her, her, her hundred birthday can it you imagine two oh days for 100th birthday yeah. older than my mom I'm just well, welcome to Arnabur, the, the epicenter of the world because of the I was this is our main contributor this is tracy sub this is this is a wonderful sandra our caretaker hello who, and have you met dave no you two are on the same vlog at the same time